Hey everybody, Spartan Overdrive here. Welcome back to another quick tutorial. This one is on small customized trees. A tree tutorial, if you will. But Spartan, aren't there a million custom tree tutorials already? Yeah, that's probably true. But are they organic, free-range, grain-fed, and gluten-free? No, of course not. They're virtual blocks in a virtual world. So, I guess technically mine aren't either. But my mom said it was good. And I think my process might be a little bit different than anything I've seen so far. As usual, check the YouTube video description for downloads to everything you see in this video, along with a tutorial on how to place them in your world. So let's take a look at what we got. First off, I start by building the wood part of the tree, the trunk, and the main branches. Here I've used regular oak logs, and I've split off in four different directions at various heights. I've also come out at the ground a little bit for the root system and extended those along the ground as well. Step two is for wood enhancement. In this stage, we start to add processed wood to the logs for more detail. I find spruce wood planks to be the best complement to oak logs. I use stairs to ease the transition between the trunk and the ground, as well as the trunk and a few of the limbs, but not all. Buttons make great knobby imperfections in the tree bark where perhaps a limb was cut short. They look especially good as knots on the top texture of a log. I also like to place one or two on the ground at the base of the tree as if a small root is starting to peek through. Fence posts are easily imagined as small branches coming off the major limbs and make a great additional detail. At this stage you could use this as a dead or hibernating winter tree. Alright, step three. Now we start adding in all the foliage. Now this is what I do that's a little bit different. I start adding in my foliage just around the very ends of the limbs. What I want to do is create an approximate sphere around the very tips, but only the tips. This will be a little more evident in a moment. Additionally, I'll mix up a variety of different leaf types. In this example, I used oak, dark oak, and birch just to give a little bit more variety and depth. The whole idea behind building this way is to give more detail and more depth and dimension to the build. Step four, now we're pretty much finished and we just need to fill out the tree. So what we'll do is widen the circumference of the sphere that we made in step three. The reason we do it this way is it allows us to leave a lot of space on the interior of the tree. Just like in real life where trees typically have all their foliage around the outer tips of their branches and they have a lot of air space on the inside of the tree near the trunk where sunlight doesn't reach as well. Now this airspace allows for a lot of dimension as when you walk around the tree, you can see the limbs in the tree, just as in real life. It isn't just one big block of leaves, it looks like an actual tree with an interior. Finally, as an option, I like the style where leaves tend to droop and hang down. That gives a little bit more height variation as well. Now if your tree happens to be located near a water source, or near the edge of a cliff, an extra detail that looks really nice is extending that root system, just like in real life, to try to meet that water source or to dangle over the edge of the cliff. All I've done is extended the logs out and then added fence posts and even a few buttons where appropriate to represent roots hanging off the edge. That's it. You have a beautiful custom tree that's easy to build in survival or creative. All right, I thought I'd include a couple other trees as a little bit of a bonus. Minecraft doesn't give us a whole lot of options when it comes to the different seasons of the year, and so I thought, well, let's use our imagination and come up with the best options that we have with these default textures. So I took the tree from our tutorial, and I switched out all the leaf blocks for pink and white wool. When I tried all pink wool, it was just a little too much, and I felt like the white helped to tone it down. I also added in some glass blocks and some glass panes to give it a little bit more of a fantasy look. Since wool isn't transparent like leaves, the glass really helps bring back that depth that we had with the original tree structure. And I topped it off with some wool carpet a little bit sporadically around the tree. This reminds me a lot of a cherry blossom tree you'd see around my part of the world in the springtime. Now let's move on to our autumn options. When the weather starts to cool, but the colors start to warm. Again, I just replaced all the leaf blocks with stained hardened clay. I used primarily yellow, followed by orange, and the least amount of red. I tried a few different color options, but found I got the best result when using yellow as my primary base block. From there, I tried to use a gradient to go from yellow to orange to red. 
The high contrast between yellow and red was a little too jarring and felt like spam to me. Using this gradient seems to also round out the tree shape. I also made an alternate autumn tree. This one I used the nether wart blocks because I thought it had a nice texture that looked a little like a flower, if not maybe a leaf if you really stretch your imagination. Since this looked pretty fantastical to begin with, I went ahead and added in some glass panes and glass blocks again. This time I only used yellow and orange glass, primarily yellow since we had so much red in the nether wart block to begin with. I also changed out the wood to dark oak because the regular oak looked rather washed out compared to this high saturation nether wart block. Finally, I've included a few more variations that I made in my build world series using this same method. As with all the other trees in this build, you will find them linked in the description below along with a video tutorial on how to download these into your own world. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful and maybe even inspirational. If so, I'd love to see your builds. You can always tweet me at Spartan Glenn. In the meantime, keep it creative.